Obviously, you needed an infusion of talent. You brought in a lot of freshmen. Which of these guys look like they could contribute? Are any of them challenging for starting spots? Yeah, I think the point guard spot is a spot that, that's most important to our team right now. I think it's pretty much open. I, I think that uh, uh, the junior Brennan Wyatt and the sophomore uh, um, Kevin Alter, along with uh, Earl McLaurin, who, who was a JV player last year, has really played well this summer and the fall. And Tillman Dunbar, the freshman, I think has had a nice, good camp so far. So those four guys are all kind of battle now and, and wags up you know I've told him and told the front of the team I'm not you know I'm not playing four point guards. You know, I'm not can't play four quarterbacks, I'm not playing four point guards. We're gonna to try to get somebody to lead the team and start. We're gonna to try to get a backup. And we're gonna to try to get a backup to the backup and then the other guy's gonna play some J V basketball and try to improve his skills and and that's kind of where we're at with that. And then, so those guys are coming out here every day trying to fight for that spot. Um, so that's one that's kind of open, wide open, and we need to get figured out right away. And uh, and then I think Kemba Moore's had a very good camp so far. Um, he's a very cerebral player, can make open shots, can really pass the ball. Um, just has a very good feel for things, um, very good basketball instincts. Uh, I think the big kid, Will Kelly, is uh, really played well, really runs the floor well, blocks shots, rebounds. Very cerebral as well. He's done a nice job of picking things up. Um, so those three guys off the bat. And then Phil Guglielmo has, has uh, played well and he turned his ankle. He was out for almost 10 days. Uh, he's just getting back into things. But he had a good fall. And then Jerome Alexander has been very, very solid. Along with, uh, so I think those, those guys right now have been the guys that have done probably the most up to this big five official prize. And last year, you mentioned that you really wanted to beef up JV and Naps. Mm -hmm. Can you point to any individual as you know a success story through that yet? Is there a guy? Well, Earl McClure Earl is a sophomore guard, um, and he's got a chance to, to play this year. And he played JV all last year, practiced with us. I think the JV Naps thing will be a thing that we'll be able to evaluate next year, the year after. Um, the Naps kids are actually coming down here. They're here today. And they will play a little scrimmage thing on Friday night and then Saturday morning against some guys here on our team and uh, the JV squad. So that that'll be interesting for us to see that we've got eight guys up there and uh, anxious to see those guys play against some of our guys. Uh, and then JV squad will be a squad that develops. Uh, I think it's uh, something that's very important for us that you know it's, some guys just need to play. And uh, looking back on last year. I wish I could have gotten some of the guys that maybe didn't get a lot of time to the end of the year, could have got them more playing time with the JV squad, but it wasn't wasn't made up the way it is this year. Um, you know, with, with practice structure and, and more guys playing on the JV team that can kind of practice with us and play the JV games. We've made the schedule so it fits better into our schedule right now. Uh, we've got I think, 16 JV games this year, I think last year we had 10. So we just Taking it up a notch in terms of the competition and how many games kids are going to play. And I noticed you have the freshman from Northern Virginia. Is that what you consider kind of a recruiting area for you, or is it? Yeah, I think this. I think our local DC area. Yeah, general. it's very. You know, Baltimore, Washington, and Northern Virginia area is a very fertile area for us. A lot of very good players. Uh, obviously, we have a very uh, close connection with, with the community. Uh, people uh, very familiar with the, with the Naval Academy, what we're all about. So I think that's a, that's a natural force. Uh, this fall, we, we've concentrated on California. I was there for a week. Uh, we've got a couple of young guys coming to visit in California. We haven't recruited California in a while here. I think we're trying to get back to that, to so San Diego area, San Francisco area, Northern California, uh, where we have some uh, military presence and Navy. So we've tried to branch out some as, as well. So, but I think this area is, is, uh, is a really critical force. That uh, if we can recruit some really, there's a very good players in this area, and uh, you know, we don't want to get to go that far away, but yet we have a presence out there too, as well as Texas. Coach, could you talk a little bit more about Dunbar and Carson Wood in front of you about Yeah, him? you know, as I mentioned to him, he, he's, a, he's a very fast kid, he's very, uh, he's very athletic, he's a, has good ball speed, he has a good ball speed surge from, from, uh, from the baseline. Um, down the floor is what we're looking for as well. Um, 
he's a pretty good on, on ball defender right now. Um, so we're trying to get him to play that strength, but also teach him off the ball defense. Uh, he's got a big guy and we've got to play team defense. So he does very well on the ball, but you know, he's still learning off the ball uh, defense. Um, you know, he's a good teammate. Um, he's a quality guy, like he smiles. He's, uh, he's vocal. Um, he's a good calmness to him. His best, his best attribute right now is also, is what I told him the other day, is his worst enemy. He, he wants to go really fast all the time, and now he, he needs to help him um, learn that you can, you can gear down and then use your speed. You don't have to play at that frantic pace all the time. You can kind of lull guys into it, and then when it's there, boom, you, you've got it, and you can really push the ball or, you know, on a, on a basket cut. Cut, cut naturally, then when you're going to get a screen, boom, now your separation speed comes in because such a, you try to play the speed for, you know, how many practices we have, how many games, you do be wore out. There's no way a human being can play the speed you want to play for a two hour practice every day and, you know, 30 games. So you just you can't do it. So you need to, you need to, you know, um, pick your spots. You know, and, I'm, and I've been on to push it from baseline to baseline when you have the ball, which is good. Now when you get across that court, now you need to get to a different speed, um, a good tempo. So he's trying to figure that out uh, with the tempo is that I'm kind of preaching to him. He's looking at me like I got two heads right now. But uh, most young point guards do. I was talking to a kid who played for me at Penn State on the phone the day, Taylor Battle, and I was telling him about our point guards. He was like, yeah, I remember my freshman year. I, I just you know, thought you were nuts, and I uh, still think you're nuts. But you, know, you understand what you're doing, point guards, and uh, so that's important for you getting to play the, the tempo and the speed. Is there Sports. value in Dunbar playing a big time program like that with big time players? Yeah. Where every game, where every game is a very, very important game in the high level game. Yeah, that's right. Play the high level AAU team, play the high level high school team, uh, play for great coaching, run for a uh, You know, they won a lot of games, they won a lot of championships, and that's very, very important. Winning is very, very important to them. Um, and that's the kind of kid. Kendall Moore came in here, his high school program, very successful, uh, made a great run the state championship with junior year and senior year. Winning is very important. And uh, that's an important piece of recruiting puzzle as well, trying to recruit kids that come from winning programs and it's uh, it's built into their you know it's part of their, their DNA and it's important. You got a lot of production from Worth Smith last year. Yes. Um, what is he how how much has he improved from last he's year? He's had a very good fall. Uh, he's improved his driving to the basket. He was uh, last year he would only drive the ball left. He would drive the ball left to the basket. He wouldn't drive the ball right he knows right in the kid. Now this year he's driving the ball both ways. He's become a better rebounder this year so far. He's going after balls. Like last year, he would only rebound balls that came into his area. This year, he's searching the ball. When the shot goes up, he's searching to go get the ball. Um, those are important things. I think he's a little better defensively. Um, last year, he had a bad habit of leaving his feet on shot fakes and drives. This year, he's been more, more staying on the floor, being more solid. I think he's improved his ball skills and his passing. Um, so I think he's improved overall. I think he's tried to show some leadership on the floor as well. And uh, he's been in a very, very uh, he's been positive. He's got a little bump of his shoulder. I'm really concerned about that. We're watching that. He had a dislocation last uh, December against Presbyterian. And he had a little issue here early fall with it. Kind of tweaked it a little bit again. So we're constantly monitoring him in the shoulder. But, he stays healthy, which is an ongoing goal for us and, and for him. Um, I think he has a chance to have a very nice season for it. Obviously, every team needs a go to guy. If the clock's running down, somebody they can count and get the ball in their hands. Who, who is that for maybe? Is Isaiah potentially that guy? Or? Yeah, I think we got some guys. I think Isaiah can do that. Um, he had a good week. He had a really had a good Friday, Saturday, Sunday, and then Monday until he got hurt. He, he was really probably. You know, I told him he's probably played the best I've seen him play in, in terms of not just scoring the ball, but he really passing the ball, driving, kicking, made a defensive player too. It really was playing good, good basketball, and then he got hurt. So he has to do. I think Worth Smith. I think he can throw the ball to Worth in certain places, and he can score with. 
Uh, I think that's important. And I think uh, we got some guys who can catch and shoot it off a down screen. That uh, is important that maybe we didn't have last year. I think Kendall Moore and Phil can shoot the basketball, and uh, I'll have to point those two freshmen out. But I think you know, tell him you can get him a ball screen, and he can create something. And uh, and uh, you know, and then you have to kind of see where it goes from there. But he has the ability to break the defenses down. He has the ability to get into the gaps and break the defense down and create for somebody else uh, to get a shot. When you have limitations, Ed, um, how important is it to have a three-point shooter? I mean, give, give your kind of yeah, we didn't shoot the ball. We shot the ball poorly last year. I think we, we were much better. We're much more skill levels, much higher. We have some kids who can shoot the basketball. Even the guys who, like James Lupos yesterday, did not shoot the ball well last year, but it's contained to some other guy. He made three or four nice jumpers yesterday, trying to get guys confident in their shot. Um, like him, uh, because he can make it. You know, he can make an open jump shot. We're just trying to get him to step in and bring mechanics and have some confidence and do it. But I think some of the younger kids, but Brandon Benarini, a junior or a sophomore who played some force last year, Brandon's had a nice, nice camp so far, and, and he's made open jump shots. Um, so we've got some guys who can make open jump shots now, and uh, you know, now it's hopefully when the lights come on, they can continue to do it. They've shown and demonstrated they can do it in practice. Uh, which is a nice thing to see. Anything else? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. What is Ernie Nestor about to the table? Veteran guy been around a long yeah, time. Yeah, you know, he, he's, you know, he's just calm. I mean, you know, he, he, there are going to be ways everywhere. we got stuff going on. He's just been through it all. So he's very calm in fact. He's brought some, uh, He's bringing some things, transition offense, we're going to try and incorporate that he's done. And, uh, uh, you know, we're just, him and I are kind of just on the same wavelength in terms of some of the kids. Uh, he has a great demeanor about him talking to the kids, great style of coaching with the kids. He, he's, uh, you know, and he, he'll tell you, he's a grandfather style in the sense that after practice, the kids migrate to him. Uh, he gets the kids in the gym. Uh, you know, he's not a, uh, you know, he's not a uh, hurrah, rant, rave kind of coach. He's more of a put your arm around you, tell you what you need to do. Here's what was positive today. Here's what wasn't so positive today before you need to work on that. Kids feel very comfortable talking to him. He's very open. He's very honest. Um, the kids know that he they really cares about them as kids. And, uh, and that's been a, you know, he's been good for us, been good for the staff. Because um, he's been through it. You know, he's, I've been 28 years, he told me like 38. Um, so he's been, you know, it's the name fall camps. And, and, you know, I think WAGS is for him, it's too, it's, he, he's got, you know, he's coached some great players. You know, so he's talking to Will Kelly and Snoop the other day about Tim Duncan. Tim Duncan. <laughs> you know, Kelly, this was at Tim Duncan. You're like Tim Duncan as a freshman. You know, he didn't want to eat, he didn't like this, he didn't like that. You know, you got to eat, and you know, here's what Duncan did, and so forth. Well, it's like, you know, the kid lied, my eyes kind of light up. You know, he's talking to Tillman the other day, he's talking about, you know, Randolph Childress. Here's what Childress was like at Wake Forest. Here's what the Johnson kid was like at California. You know, here's, here's what he was about as a point guard. Here's what you need to think about now. And so, coach very, very good players. Um, and that, you know, that helps it. Obviously, the kids, you know, light up with some instant credibility.